You have to make a choice. You see, an indecision is still a decision in life. And we hit those crossroads where we say, how are we going to get to where God wants us to go? How are we going to become? How do I get out of my past and get off of this gerbil wheel that just continues to go over and over? There's this woman, an incredible woman in the Bible that has taught me so much. Because my past was pretty tainted. Um, it carried over into my adult life. There were triggers. There were things that made me revert or go back from my childhood. And I had to make a decision, a choice. You say, well, what choice did Ruth have to make? You see, Ruth had married Naomi's son. So did, so did uh, Orpah, her daughter, her sister. And, and Naomi had two sons and a husband. They had left Bethlehem. They go down and they reside with the Moabites. And the sons die off. The, the father dies off. And Naomi gets up and goes, I'm going back. And she takes her two daughter-in-laws and she stops halfway and she says, stop, go back. I don't have anything to offer to you. There's nothing in the future. There's no sons. In fact, she's so bitter at this point. She renames herself and calls herself Miss Mara. I'm bitter. No, I'm going, just go back. Orpah goes back. But Ruth says, basically in Ruth chapter one, verse 14 says, no, I love you. I love who you are. You're my family. And so wherever you go, I'm going. And whoever you serve, I'm serving. Wherever you live, I'm living. She made a choice. She made a choice not to return to her past. She had no idea what her future held. She had no idea what was ahead of her. But she decided there's nothing to return to but disappointment, failure, famine. There's just nothing there. There's nothing to go back. And some of us glamorize our past. But God says this. He says, forgetting those things that are behind you. And pressing forward, pressing toward, going ahead for the prize, the mark of the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. Now, it's interesting because to press means to resist that which would resist you. And often there are things that resist us. Why? Because change, all change, even if it means a better tomorrow, is difficult for us to embrace because all change feels like loss. So it seems like I'm losing something. That's why we get stuck in bad relationships, stuck in bad situations and circumstances, stuck with bad influences in our lives, stuck in a bad dead end job, stuck in a place that we go, what am I doing here? And we have to make that choice. You see, you you can stay there or you can decide, I can't change anything about my yesterday but I can change everything about my tomorrow. So God, I'm gonna follow you by faith. I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna go to a place I've never been because I want a life that I believe you've promised. And God virtually does that for everyone, whether it was Abraham, go to the land that that I'll show you of. Go here, do this. And he always asks us to leave something. In fact, one of the only women that really, really, I mean, there's some, I, I sometimes say, Uh, the stupid women of the Bible and how not to be one. There's one, we don't even really know her name, that wouldn't let go of her past. It was Lot's wife. And it says she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. I mean, it was over. But what does it mean like, oh, I just glanced back and look what happened? No, it means she longed for her past. She longed to go back to a place that was corrupt, that was sinful, that was not good because it was familiar. And sometimes we get stuck because of familiar things and God has more for you. I wanted to come encourage you to be that virtuous woman. That's what Ruth was. It's the only other woman that, that was defined outside of Proverbs 31 as a virtuous woman that said, I'm not afraid to go where I've never been. If God is leading me, even through this person that is sometimes difficult to follow, but I have to make a decision. What do you choose? Are you going to live in yesterday? Or are you going to go for your tomorrow? Will you walk by faith through the word of God and let his word navigate you? Will you get out a compass by the Holy Spirit and say, God, show me and lead me the way? Because I believe that not just individually, but as a, as a movement right now, what will be the direction for our younger generation? What will my granddaughter grow up thinking that this is norm, this is okay? What will the women arise with and say today? Because trust me, there's a lot, a lot of voices coming out right now. 
But is that voice in alignment with the word of God? And is it leading us back to Bethlehem, the house of God, the place of bread, the place of fresh manna? See, God wants to lead you to a place that's not just the place of his house, Bethlehem, the place of bread, but he wants to lead you to a place that God brings in Boaz. And we all go, yeah, I want my Boaz, my husband. But Boaz really was sent as a person of purpose to bring forth the plan of God so that Ruth would be able to carry forth the seed that would produce the lineage of the Messiah. You see, if you'll get out of your past and step into your future, God will do something so big in you that it'll leave legacy for lasting generations.